Hi, I'm uh, Paul Beckwith. I want to have a conversation with you today about uh, the greenhouse effect, basically, and about some of the misconceptions that are floating around about the causes of uh, the extreme weather events that we're seeing these days. Um, so basically, you know, what is really happening is Greenhouse gases are rising in the atmosphere. Light from the sun heats up the surface of the earth, surface of the oceans. The temperature rises. They emit long wave radiation or heat back up into the atmosphere and it's trapped by greenhouse gases causing heating of the earth. And the heating is very non-uniform. The poles are heating much, much faster rates than the rest of the planet because of feedback effects in the climate system. The uh, Arctic in particular is getting a lot darker because we're losing uh, the ice cover on the Arctic Ocean and we're also losing snow cover on, over the land surfaces, mostly in the spring. So this is darkening the Arctic. Also, we've had fires recently on Greenland and that smoke is going on to the ice and that's causing darkening. So the Arctic is darkening significantly and we can measure this from satellites. So it's warming much faster than the rest of the planet. Therefore, it's disrupting the jet streams. The jet streams are slowing down. They're becoming wavier and we're getting all of these extreme weather events. So what I really want to talk about now is some of the hoops that people are trying to jump through in order to invoke other causes of climate change, which just don't make a lot of sense. So let's start with the head of the US government. Okay, uh, he's arguing that it's a Chinese hoax. I mean, this is, you know, what a clown. <laughs> you know, seriously, like 2017, you know, the earth is being threatened by abrupt climate change and We've got this guy who was elected um, and he's saying it's a Chinese hoax and he's getting rid of all of the climate change people in the government and also, you know, slashing all of the programs. So, you know, this is a horrifying situation for, for the planet, not just for the people in the U.S. In fact, the U.S. government just had a 600 page report out, um, very detailed report, uh, which makes for some very horrifying reading on uh you know what's expected in the in the near term and and uh, further term you know further out future so let's talk about some of these misconceptions or ideas that are floating around the web that just don't have any merit um they're they're um, just fake i mean they're they're just made up fabricated you know how they gain legs and get a following and popularity you know they have a Facebook page and a website and often posts and you know there's semblance of truth to some of the posts but you know it's just uh, you know start off with some facts and then take off on your crazy theory so let's talk about some of these things so one of the things is cosmic rays you know cosmic rays are known to um, by the by the way just go to skepticalscience.org and Google the the thing you know just put it put in the term um say cosmic rays and do a search and you can get a whole explanation on how cosmic rays are not causing the climate change that we're seeing now and one of the things to always remember is consider the time scales and the spatial scales of what's happening in climate change and the particular thing that is invoked to explain you know why things are changing so with cosmic rays the cosmic ray background um, depends on sun activity and what gets through to the uh, lower atmosphere also depends on the um, magnetosphere surrounding the earth. So there's slight changes to, uh, so, so the cosmic rays, what they do is they, um, they cause, um, they can cause ionization of particles and that creates centers for perhaps forming clouds. So there could be some more cloud with cosmic rays, but the change in cosmic rays is very low and the effect has been, you know, discounted. It's not 
it's nowhere near as, as, as it, it's not causing climate change. And it would also be causing a cooling, you know, generating more clouds um, is what's argued. Um, and, uh, you know, we're not getting a cooling. We're getting, you know, ra very rapid warming and it's ever accelerating. Um, so, you know, some people are arguing that we're going into a grand solar minimum. So the solar cycle is an 11 year cycle. It's actually a 22 year cycle, but it's it the um it flips okay the magnetic field changes in a 22 year cycle but the the basically number of sunspots on the sun varies in an 11 year cycle so it flips you know twice per the 22 year cycle but and and uh you know when there's lots of sunspots there's more solar radiation coming from the sun so more is hitting the earth. When there's less sunspot, there's less, slightly less radiation. And it's about a 0.1% variation, 0.1% change. So it's much, much smaller than any greenhouse gas effect for one thing. And, you know, when we go through, if there's, the sun is very quiet, there's very few sunspots for many, many cycles, like say six or seven cycles, six, uh, you know, 70 years or so, think of the Maunder minimum, you know, there's 0.1% less energy coming from the sun for about 70 years, and that's enough to cause a cooling, you know, over time, little ice age, that sort of thing. But this is completely dwarfed by the rapidly exponentially rising greenhouse gases. Okay, so we're not going into any grand solar minimum. In fact, the Greenhouse gases are so large that they probably means that we wouldn't have, wouldn't wouldn't enter another ice age. You know, not at not at these levels. I mean, even though the orbital changes, the Milankovic cycles, the changes of the Earth around the Sun, the orbit changes, the shape of the orbit changes, things like that. You know, over twenty thousand, forty thousand, hundred year uh, time scales causing the natural progression of ice ages, warm period, ice ages, warm period, you know, but the greenhouse gases we put in the atmosphere have dwarfed out any, any of that sort of thing. So we can't, um, so sorry, um, we're not going into this uh, cooling period. Um, another thing is, that's discussed is polar shifts, okay? The, the, um, the location on the Earth where the magnetic field comes out normal perpendicular to the surface okay so at both poles this location wanders around on the time scale and you know it changes but it's a very long time scale i mean we're getting abrupt climate change happening you know big changes year to year um the time scale is just completely wrong for the idea that a polar shift is causing this extreme weather um and also i mean we, you, there really needs to be trust in, you know, the experts and what scientists are saying. You know, the consensus is always going to be on the conservative side. So things are always happening faster than uh, what they're saying. You know, another possibility, another thing that you might read about or I get comments about on my videos is, um, is Planet X or... Nibiru, the idea that there's this large planet out there which is approaching the Earth, which is the gravitational field is distorting and pulling things and affecting weather on the Earth. Um, you know, I, I don't think so. This is, this is uh, you know, first of all, we don't see such a planet out there. Okay, astronomers don't say that there's such a thing out there. Um, the magnetic and the... Um, the gravitational field would be affected, tides would be affected, you know, oceans, you know, things would be affected um, disproportionately to one side. And we just don't see this, this happening. Um, there's, I mean, the planet doesn't, isn't there. Um, and also, you know, it would be the change if, if something was there, but was, you know, but was pretty, wasn't moving that fast, you know, the time scale relative to you know, changes on the Earth is just all wrong. So forget about Nibiru, planet X. Volcanoes have been invoked. You know, when volcanoes go off, they put a lot of sulfur dioxide 
up in the stratosphere, cools the earth for a number of years, you know, three years, for example, with Pinatubo, half a degree cooling over three years. Um, you know, what, if you look at the last uh, temperature records of the earth from 1880s to 2017, it just came out for the July numbers. I mean, temperatures are climbing rapidly. There is variation in the temperature, you know, periodic drops for a few years, and that's because of volcanoes. We can look at some volcanoes and see how they affect that curve. But, uh, you know, we know volcanoes that are occurring on the planet, and, and uh, they're just, you know, small effect. HARP, High Altitude um, Atmospheric Research Project, you know, some large radar looking structures, large towers emitting electromagnetic, ra electromagnetic radiation up into the stratosphere to ionize particles to do experiments. This, is, this was ongoing, you know, during the Cold War. Um, you know, these stations are mostly shut down and they're local experiments. They wouldn't be affecting, you know, global conditions. Chemtrails is a big one. Um, and, you know, geoengineering, chemtrails, you know, we're not geoengineering the planet. I mean, scientists need to have a bit more pushback to educate the public on this. Um, it's, it should be on skepticalscience.org. If not, ask them to put it there. Um, but it's certainly not happening. I mean, there, there's just no, there, there, there's no, you wouldn't be able to hide such a thing. Um, there are geoengineering, some little tiny experiments that are starting to be talked about, you know, nothing of any scale that would have any impact whatsoever on the planet. This is something that has to be scaled up significantly in order to impact the planet. And this is the worst um, fake uh, thing because we need to geoengineer to cool the Arctic and we need to extract CO2 from the atmosphere using carbon dioxide removal. And those are, you know, under the geoengineering umbrella. So, so there has been some pushback by scientists saying, you know, a couple papers um, sort of debunking chemtrails. Um, one thing is that the strat, I've done a couple of videos in the past. So just Google chemtrails, my, Paul Beckwith, and you can find what I said about them in the past. You know, another thing that people talk about is Fukushima. Okay, Fukushima is a horrible thing and there's still radiation going into the ocean apparently, you know, which is absurd. I mean, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. You have an accident, tidal wave accident and, you know, the damage to marine life in that area and as far as the spread of radiation, you know, is, is horrifying. But this is not causing, has, doesn't have anything to do with climate change, doesn't have anything to do with ocean currents and uh, ocean temperatures and you know it's such an insignificant tiny small amount of heat um, and you know all reactors that are on the ocean they use bring in water from the ocean and it goes through and cools the process and then goes back into the ocean or river you know hotter temperatures but it's got a negligible effect on the planet so you really need to look at scales and the other thing I'd like to comment on is, you know, the rapidity of climate change. As I mean, climate change is horrible. You know, abrupt climate change is horrible. We're changing the planet. But for people to go and say that we're all going to go, you know, extinct, uh, you know, it used to be in 10 years, you know, all the humans, all the 7.5 billion of us. And then, you know, and then that 10 year number even has been moved up uh, to, I believe the comment was, you know, in weeks or months not years, not decades. And, you know, this type of thinking really has, you know, has, there's no basis in science for, for this type of, of thinking. Um, and, you know, my view is it's very irresponsible to, you know, it's very discrediting to people that would want to say such a thing. So anyway, um, nope, sorry, it's greenhouse gases. And, uh, you know, and, and that's it, plain and simple. Oakham's razor, simplest reason. Anyway, thank you for listening.